Okay, everybody knows I have electron flood theory, which is this right here. I've been talking about everything is a dipole. And there's a fixed particle, the black one, and then there's a point particle, which has apparently may have no mass at all. But that's all that exists. Now, I have been working on this since I was a kid. We're going to be talking about absolute zero now, which means the lowest possible temperature that you can get to. Now, <clears throat> I did all of this stuff, and no, well, I mean, it's time to brag and brag. It's not bragging if it's true. That's what my old boss used to say, and it's true. I did all of this, every kind of chemistry and all the physics and all of that stuff, energies and chemistry and electricity, electronics, thermochemistry, and here's the actual calculations, the data. Heat of reaction, heat of, you know, uh, all the different heat of neutralization, and the difference between acids and salts, because they're totally different, and the reason is acids have less electrons than salts. So what does that mean? By the time you get to the very end and you do all the calculations and figure out the changes and what happened, it ends up it's electricity. It all ends up electric power. All the power is electric. Even though you're thinking it's chemistry, no. It ends up it's, they're moving electrons. And the same thing happens with cold. Did you notice something gets colder, it gets lighter? Do you know that? I, we probably didn't, didn't know that. Now, so that tells me that both sides of the particle have some form of mass. Although, when you get colder and colder and colder, it really doesn't go much, much, much low. You know, it keeps going lower and lower and lower because you keep lo losing electrons. And every electron you lose weighs 0 .000585 something like that at atomic mass units. So yes, you, well, no, see, that's wrong, because that's the complete thing. That's the black and the white. This is what we got to do is figure out what the difference between the two ways. And I always make sure you understand, this was 50 years ago. Transfer of energy is from light to atomic vapor. They're little dipole particles, and they come in a a package of two dipoles together which makes it light and which will bounce off of you. A single dipole is an electron. And here, let me just show you one more time. Here's, the, here's exactly what it is. That's what an electron is. We never knew about the dark side because they're always looking for the dark matter. Here it is. It's attached to the bright matter that we can see. And it will always surround the dark matter because we're down in the light range. They don't even know what light is. They think it's a wave. It could be a particle. Well, it's a particle that has a magnetic field around it, so it creates a wave as it goes. That's all. And this is what a photon is. It's a complete electron side by side. So this will bounce. It doesn't necessarily have to stick to you. That will always want to incorporate into something. That's why electricity static and all that to a snap and you feel it. It's it's burning into you. And these whoops. And these are the neutrinos. The muon neutrino, electron neutrino. We separate them so we can see sterile muons, and that's what they're looking for now. You know, every time I do videos, I learn. So I I, I don't already know everything about this stuff. I, I think I have a good handle on it, but I'm learning right now. I could be wrong, because I was thinking that this was the particles that they're all, every black always has a white, no matter what. Well, that may not be true. In superconductivity, you may not have any whites at all. There just might be the black, because the white, as it says, Fermi Lab, Don Lincoln said, this is a fixed particle, the black one. 100% fixed, never going to change, and I agree with that. And this one here might not have any mass at all. That's that's really not possible now as we're thinking about it. And again, I'm thinking about it as I'm talking to you. Because if you keep taking weight away 
from, I mean, keep getting something colder, it gets lighter and lighter. So something's leaving. Is it just the white one? The, you know, the glowy one? Or is it taking the black one with it? I don't think it's taking the black one with it. So I think it might be the, the blacks, it can exist on their own. And I have actually seen them exist on their own in space. And the Russians test they did with ionized particles when they put it in a vacuum chamber in zero gravity. So it's not good, had, didn't have to go anywhere. It formed a black ball right in the center, just like that. Hmm, it's very interesting. Again, I'm, I'm learning just as you're learning. This is light. That's a particle of light, a photon. And then, I, I'm sure you can see that. All right, you see the big thing from Fermilab, which is the black particle fixed, does not change. Then you see the, the glowy one, which is changes and get, it may not have any any mass whatsoever. However, I say it must have mass. And that's the glowy one, and the black one never changes size. That's why we were able to split these particles. You see this? The black one didn't change size. We put it through a Ventura. Now, this is just absolutely phenomenal how accidental this was. A fellow named Rod Warren, who I've been working with for the last oof, seven, eight years now, well, a long time, did this just by accident. And when I saw what he did, it just blew my mind. And nobody else picked up on what he was doing, but I could see this was the light particle. And I could see that it was accelerating, and I could see here that light particle divided, the black came away from the white. And I could also see from Fermilab and everybody else, CERN, they say the exact same thing. The muon neutrino is the black ball, never changes size, and just continues to go on forward when it hits a medium like this medium. The electron neutrino, which is the white ball attached to the black ball, turns into a shower. Exactly here, electron showers. And this Cherenkov radiation is when a high energy particle hits like heavy water and it, it sort of it slows it down and the muon just keeps going, you know, by itself and the, it doesn't change size, it's just one big black ball. And the electron shower turns into a shower. Electron a neutrino turns into a shower. So we have separated them here. That's fission. This is fusion. They come back together. This is a sterile muon. Look it up. They're looking for this. The sterile muon. We found it. And this is a light accelerating because of the venturi. And what Rod did was instead of making a flat plate with a tiny little slit and, you know, two slits, he made one slit with rounded venturi. And it had to force through that slit. And the black couldn't get through. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny little slit, but a venturi. So everything, the only way we could see this light wave at all is because it's accelerating. If that didn't accelerate, you can't, you, you can't just take a picture of that in the air. It just doesn't have enough energy. Once it starts really concussing, like it is there, now you've got some energy, you can see it. All right, so let's just sum it up. The black particle never changes, never changes. The white one can get bigger and smaller and squirt right through our venturi and separate from the black. That's a photon. If you just had half of that, that's an electron. An electron will burn right into you. It cannot maintain itself on its own. It has to be complete with at least one more. And then they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they turn into balls like that, which we call atoms. And they become stable at certain frequencies. And they literally shake until they hit a certain frequency and they lock in at that frequency. It's got something to do with the hum of the universe, and I, 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 that I can't explain. All right, this is the article about the point particle and the fixed particle, and that it's uh, somewhere down here. Point particles are much more bizarre and are sometimes said to have zero size. Well, I don't know about the size, but I, I, I'm pretty sure they have a mass because I believe that is what leaves to create absolute zero. You take every single one out and all you have is black. Okay. It appears that it can exist on its own. 
And if you can extract enough of the white ones, it will still be a mass, because these have really almost no size. Zero size. I, I could pretty much agree with that. You could take them all out of there, and this fills everything. So I'm not going any against Don Lincoln's article whatsoever. Okay, so I showed you what I showed you, and, and uh, that is their mission at Fermilab, is to find the muons and the electron neutrinos and the sh electron showers, which is exactly what they portray them at. I did not make that, that little characterization. That is exactly what they see. However, they're breaking up gigantic protons, smashing thousands of pieces, and finding these are the smallest pieces. But then there's a whole other zoo of particles they also think are fixed particles, which they're not. These are, everything is made of those. They're all bound up together to make into first photons, which is a four, four of them. And then they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you get into atoms. And then atoms share little electrons with each other. And you know that it has to be true because ions and um, isotopes are just one or two electrons missing or extra. A radioactive decay is just some, some extra ones that they don't want. Pew, pew, pew. Every now and then they shoot them off. That's, it's pretty obvious now. But you have to be able to take a look at it and realize that this is true and it's just because I don't have any PhDs and so forth I'm just a curious guy <laughs> and these are what they're I'm curious about and I've been curious about this I was in nuclear missiles when I was in the army so I'm not I'm, and I showed you the work I did that was 50 years ago but I couldn't fight city hall I had nothing to stand behind this year I can stand behind all day long and nobody will stand in front no, I just had a second thought on this. I think when you extract particles, you're pulling each one of these out as a unit. All right, basically electrons, but they would come out as a flow of of particles together, not just like an electric current. I don't know. I really, at this point, I'm, I'm a little confused. I must admit. All right, so I admit to being confused a little bit about what really happens when heat flows. Is it half of this particle going? If it was, it would be electricity. Is it the full particle going, which is light? I don't understand how that could be either. Is it just the white particle going and leaving the black? Because the, the black does not travel. The black just wants to be gravity. It just wants to pull the white ones into it, is the way I see it. But I can show you for a fact we accelerated the light. We split the particles, the black and the white has split here. They came back together, identical to what CERN wants. And it, it is exa exactly what Fermi Lab predicted. And we show here, I mean, there's no question. That's the black fixed, and this is the white point. There's the black fixed. There's the white point, and here it is just in its configuration, not highlighted. This looks like it needs to be looked at to me. Now, until we have a discussion about this, as far as I'm concerned, all they're doing is walking around in circles. They show these particles. This is back in 2013. This is back, I, we did this in 2014, 2015. I was done with the research in 2015. This is all goes back to 2015. And I put light as dark energy and dark matter in the vacuum of space. It's coming through space. That's what comes through these particles. Where do you think light comes from? I mean, this is light. It's from a red laser, but light is light. And this is what I've been told a hundred times from all the top physicists. Well, light is light. Of course light is light. Well, what's going on here? Is that light? Well, you know, and then they just walk away. Time to fess up and start doing some real scientific research. That's all I can say, and I'm not finding that anywhere whatsoever. And I, I have approached literally every single university that has ever spoken about nuclear physics. 100%. If you, if you haven't heard from me, let's talk. 
but I have tried. And I mean all the top ones, all the way up. And I even went to the University of Geneva in Switzerland online. And I showed them this too. And they, they were impressed, basically. They sounded impressed. And I said, well, what can we do? And they said, well, we'll follow you. I said, I said are you kidding me? And that was the last I heard from them. All right, so what we need is some kind of a forum to discuss this so I can present this evidence and other people can start on their own because this is the new physics. Everything is a dipole. There is no such thing as a big gigantic proton and a bunch of little, little tiny electrons. That doesn't work. Everything is made of these particles. That's one particle there which we would normally call an electron, but it has a dark side. There's another electron. Back to back, they're just like two bar magnets. And if you put a bunch of them together, they turn into atoms as they form nucleuses. And then they get stable at a certain quantity. And then your quantum is where it, one or two or three or a bunch of them try to get in on the outside, but it keeps it away. It says, no, we've got enough to coat the surface. And the coating is like this. The coating is like that. That's a cross section. It's like a ball of the particles. The white one's on the outside, the black is on the inside. That's why we've never seen it before. And it takes about 1839 of these bits to make one of the smallest, elect uh, smallest particles, which is a proton. This is a stable, semi-stable particle. But protons aren't just one, exactly one big ball. You could have a couple of extra electrons, a couple less. That's called an isotope. It's not exactly the weight of what it's supposed to be. So obviously, they're not one ball.